Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. We want to continue to pray for our nation, those that are in leadership. We want to pray for our local community. We want to continue to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church. And we want to continue to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. We thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray that your word and your spirit would influence the direction of this nation. We pray for our local community that you will continue to open up doors of utterance. We also pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. And lastly, Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world that you would build a hedge of protection around them. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. I want to direct your attention here this morning to the book of Luke, chapter number 15. We want to read verses 8 through 10 of Luke, chapter number 15. Either what woman, woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. I want to talk to us for just a few moments this morning about lost in the house lost in the house. Luke chapter 15 uh, is extraordinarily important because it is one chapter where there are some things here that are not found anywhere else in the totality of the gospels, either uh, Matthew, Mark, or John. And in Luke chapter number 15, we have three different illustrations of lost Ness, lostness. And of course, in the very first illustration that Jesus uses, he is talking about a lost sheep. Um, and he describes that and he describes the restoration of that sheep. And he describes the celebration from uh, the restoring of that lost sheep. Bear in mind, that uh, I think it's important that Jesus did leave the 99. The 99 were secure, the, line, the 99, we assume they had a level of responsibility, they had uh, an understanding of what was taking place. It's very important that uh, the master or the shepherd goes after the lost one. I've, I've reviewed this many, many times. And I know after 27 years of pastoring that there are just some people that don't make the turn when the group makes the turn or they, they wander off. They, they haven't yet got the revelation that this is a church that is founded in truth and founded in revelation. And they start looking elsewhere and those kind of scenarios. Not everybody that leaves fits that, uh, fits that paradigm. Uh, there are certain qualifications and requirements to fit that lost sheep that wanders off. But the good news is it is restored, it's brought back, and there is great celebration. And then the last illustration you have of a man that has two sons and the younger of these sons uh, gathers up all of his living and journeys into a far country. A very, very important illustration of people that wander out after being raised in the father's house, never having tasted alcohol and never having breathed the oxygen that's found in a far country and never given themselves to riotous living and uh, running with harlots and, and everything else. But yet it does happen. And in that incredible story, 
when uh, this young man finds himself in a pig pen and eating the same husks that are eaten of the unclean pigs, he comes to himself. The greatest words in this entire illustration, he came to himself. And so he goes back to the father's house and he is restored. It is an incredibly important story. But juxtaposed between the lost sheep and the lost son is the story of the lost coin. There are some interesting things that are found here in this particular illustration that are not found in either the illustration of the lost sheep or the illustration of the lost son. We are dealing with the lost coin. We're dealing with an inanimate object. We are dealing with an object rather than a living person or a living creature. It, it, is, it is an object. And also in the, in the story of the lost sheep, we're in the outdoors where the starry night is our roof and this lost sheep wanders off uh, in terra firma. It is outside. It is ex externalized. And then we have the story of the lost son, how that he was raised in the father's house, but he goes into a far country. It's outside. It's away. It's a far off. But in this illustration, this inanimate yet valuable object, although it's inanimate, it is absolutely valuable. It's a valuable coin, but it's lost in the house. It's lost in the house and where they've heard apostolic preaching. It's lost in the house where they have heard the great testimonies of what God has done in individual individuals lives it's lost in the house where they've seen people receive the baptism of the holy ghost they've seen people get baptized they've seen people dramatically be transformed under the power of god yet it's in the house but it's lost it is not found it is not in that it is not in that special place uh, where the coins that are valuable are kept. Somehow it either rolled under the couch or rolled under the refrigerator or somehow it was kicked uh, with unknowingly. It was kicked behind a piece of furniture in the corner, but it's lost. And so the woman lights the candle and gets the broom. Of course, the woman is the type of the church. Hallelujah. The church is never, is never, um, uh, it's never uh, illustrated by the gender of a man. It is now, it's a woman and she, the church is looking for the lost coin. Let's call it the ministry. The preacher, the pastor begins to preach in such a way. He prays, he fasts, he gets direction. He begins to preach in such a way. He's moving things out of the way. He's turning things over. He's, he's moving big things out of the way, not throwing them away, but moving them aside looking in every corner, looking in particular situations that maybe have become shadowed. They're dark areas within the local church, and he hasn't preached this way in, in a while. But ultimately, he finds the coin that was lost in the house and brings it back into fellowship with the other coins. This last verse here that is found in all three of these Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Church, when you see people that are beginning to emotionally and spiritually and mentally separate themselves from the good of the body, although they're still in attendance, make no mistake about it, they need to be restored. It may be an evangelist, it might be the pastor, it might be a testimony, it might be all church prayer night, that something happens that allows that one coin to come to the place of recognizing, you know what, I have separated myself. I'm not in a good place. I'm in a place that's dark. I'm in a place that's cold. I'm in a place that's shadowed. I'm in a place that's lonely. Now, some people are good with that, but there's other issues that might be there. But in this particular illustration, the ministry and the church does not stop until that person is brought back to correct thinking, correct praying, correct living, and correct fellowship. Lost in the house.
God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.